Tomorrow's competitive advantage will be determined by how well industry leaders innovate today. Having the right infrastructure will make all the difference in enabling them to deliver. Hey everyone, welcome to this event, Data Driven Starts with Intelligent Infrastructure. I'm your host, Lisa Martin. This segment is called Managing the Cost and Complexity of Hybrid Cloud Data Infrastructure. It's gonna focus on exploring the challenges customers are facing around data infrastructure and how they're solving them with Hitachi Vantara. Please welcome my guest, Dan McConnell, SVP Product Management and Enablement for Digital Infrastructure at Hitachi Vantara. Dan, great to have you on the program. Great to be here, thank you much, Lisa. So customers, Dan, across every industry are facing so many challenges that go well beyond just managing the growth of data, right? Out in the field, I'd love to know some of the things that you're hearing from customers about what they are expecting their data infrastructure to deliver. Absolutely. As you pointed out, data growth continues. Uh, no surprise there. Pick your alarming stat of the week. But uh, data growth it just in volume continues to grow. But it's not only the amount of that data, uh, it's also the importance of that data, not just the ones and the zeros, but, but what's actually in the data. Is it a social security number that can't be copied outside this region? Is it the personal iPhone picks that probably don't need to be backed up in triplicate? In the same vein, uh, increasing regulatory and compliance regulations surrounding that data as well as new requirements such as sustainability. Um, you know, How do I store the increasing amounts of data all while trying to drive a, a, a zero carbon footprint initiative? Um, and and uh, you know, all of this uh, in an increasingly more complex environment uh, with the introduction of edge and hybrid and multi-cloud, multi those are driving a much more distributed environment of data. And on top of all of this, to help solve all of these mounting challenges, they're faced with skill set shortages. Um, you know, they need they need an infrastructure that is automated and flexible with the agility of the cloud models, capable of managing cost and complexity of increasingly distributed hybrid environments. Also, one that is able to scale to meet growth demands while while understanding the actual information that resides in that data. So some great opportunities with respect to data, also some pretty significant challenges that you articulated. Let's kind of look into that. And one of the things that we know, Dan is Hitachi Vantara, well known for enterprise storage across every industry. I happen to notice that nine of the 10 banks are using Hitachi solutions, for example. So with customers needing this modernized data infrastructure, and you talked about hybrid edge, core, cloud, we know Hitachi is talking way more about selling boxes. So talk about how you're working and partnering together with customers to solve the challenges that they have that you were talking about. Absolutely. Um, to your point, our, our solutions are, are, are trusted. You mentioned nine out of 10 banks. It's nine out of 10 of the largest media. It's nine out of 10 of the largest telecom. Um, it, 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 there's, a, there's a good reason uh, for being trusted and, and trust is earned for many, many years. Uh, we've had infrastructure running the world's most mission critical workloads in the industry's toughest environments. We will continue to innovate and drive leadership uh, in, our, in our core storage products. But there are other strategic pillars as well that we are focused on that are shaping our offerings. Uh, the, the first one, um, driving ease of use through analytics and automation. Uh, this is lever leveraging the telemetry, analytics, and automation across the stack to reduce the complexity with what we'll call self-driving infrastructure. Uh, also, we are accelerating the transition to software-defined and hybrid-enabled, uh, transitioning our trusted traditional stacks into software-defined stacks to enable flexibility and agility, as well as the ability to run them in the cloud to create a seamless data plane across both on-prem and off-prem. And uh, lastly, delivering on as a service. This is both from a flexible consumption pay-as-you-go model, but also from a service level and manageability perspective. One of the things that caught my ear that you mentioned, Dan, is trust is earned. That is, trust is currency that is so incredibly important to talk to Ventura, I know to your customers as well. You talked about ease of use. You talked about reducing complexity, accelerating transition to software-defined. So let's double-click a little bit here. Walk me through some of those really 
tangible, concrete innovations that Hitachi Vantar is delivering to its customers? Will do. Much appreciated. Um, you know, a, a full full core portfolio refresh across mid range and en enterprise. Now that's you know it's it's core to our business. Uh, but but one particular innovating aspect here is that this includes a true scale out software defined version based on a common code base. So this is a a, a software defined storage based on our industry proven uh, a, a traditional code stack. That enables common management and common data services across mid-range, enterprise, and software defined wherever you run it, either on-premise or cloud hosted. Um, so a, a, another one, we recently released Cloud Connect. Uh, it's, a, it's a near cloud solution uh, that uh, enables the advantages of enterprise class storage, but direct connect. Uh, to major cloud service providers for use cases like compute scaling or backup and DR. Another one, uh, we re recently launched cybersecurity capabilities uh, that enables immutable copies, uh, as well as a cyber resiliency air gap solution on our, our, our VSP product line. Um, also, in general, a broader mindset shift uh, where we are treating our storage as much more of a continuous platform. Uh, the, the offering we call modern storage assurance, um, but uh, basically enables our, our platforms, obviously our, 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 our platforms scale as you grow from, from two controllers to four controllers to 12 controllers. So from a performance capability, they, they scale with you, uh, but also across generations as well with full data in place upgrades and no downtime. So your storage stays as a long-term platform as you scale in performance or as you grow over generations, um, much more of a consistent platform view of the storage. Uh, uh, in addition, uh, we released a, a, a cloud managed storage as a service solution um, as a part of our Everflex portfolio. Uh, with, it, it's got a standardized rate card, um, uh, uh, integrated uh, billing system or uh, billing system integration, um, as well as uh, automated provisioning for the on-premise storage. So uh, quite, quite a list of, of recent launches. Um, so no doubt we've been busy, but uh, you'll see we, we continue to be busy moving forward. That's a good thing. You mentioned Cloud Connect, cybersecurity capabilities, so important in today's cyber landscape. You also mentioned no downtime, which is probably music to everyone's ears, cloud managed storage as a service. So let's finish up, let's take it home, Dan, by talking about some, you know, some of the nuggets, the proof in the pudding the voice of the customer. I always think there's no better validation than what your customers are saying about their outcomes. So share with us a customer example or two that you think really articulates the value of what Hitachi is delivering. Absolutely, I'll, I'll share a few. Um, you know, one, uh, Hitachi has the pleasure of being a key strategic partner for BMW, uh, providing their enterprise cloud storage and data management. Uh, we deliver this as a service um, from, from Hitachi Ventara. This enables BMW with simple, agile, flexible solution that's pay-as-you-go to help them fuel their in, uh, innovation without uh, managing the underlying infrastructure, leaving that to, to people who are focused on, on managing the infrastructure. Um, another great example is, is Rabobank. Uh, this is a Netherlands-based financial services company. Uh, over 8 million customers across 39 countries managing over uh, 590 billion euros. Uh, the top priority for its IT teams is to build a reliable infrastructure that safeguards business continuity. Um, their, their private cloud grew quickly from, from 2,000 VMs to over 21,000 VMs. Uh, they, they, they handled that kind of scale through implementing an automated private cloud approach with the help of, of Hitachi Ventara uh, and our converged solutions. Uh, they, they leveraged our built-in automation capabilities that drove both a 40% increase in performance, but also notable improved operational efficiency and time to value. Uh, in fact, they, they, they handled 
uh, you know, what was over that that 10x scale without adding a single additional person to manage it. So they went from from 2,000 VMs to 21,000 VMs, all with the same uh, IT staff. Um, you know, a great example of of how analytics, automation, converge solutions can can uh, greatly increase operational efficiency. And I'm going to guess that we are just scratching the surface. You mentioned two great customer examples. I'm sure we're there are so many more. Unfortunately, we're out of time. But Dan, thank you for joining me on the program today, talking about what customers in every industry are expecting from their data infrastructure, the challenges that are there, but also how Hitachi is helping customers to eliminate those challenges one by one. We so appreciate your insights. Thank you so much for having me. All right, my pleasure. This is Lisa Martin on behalf of theCUBE and Hitachi Ventura. Thanks for watching, stay tuned for more. There's a dirty little secret in the tech industry. Data centers emit more greenhouse gases than the entire airline industry, which is why we're making data centers not only eco-friendly, but eco first and foremost, reducing carbon emissions by 65% and consuming 65% less energy. Hitachi Vantara, for the planet, for the data driven. Our founder, Namahe Odaira, has a vision of converting Japan from coal-fired steam power to hydroelectric power. Hitachi designed and built the first hydroelectric generator in Japan. Sustainability is in the DNA of our family of companies. We're in this for everyone. Hey everyone, welcome to this event, Data Driven Starts with Intelligent Infrastructure. I'm your host, Lisa Martin. Atos is shifting its entire IT operations across data center and multi-cloud to one cloud operating model. And the benefits are cloud experience and cloud economics for workloads that are distributed anywhere for a future that's nimble, that's climate neutral and more efficient. Please welcome my guest for this segment, Adam Lewis, the global CTO of Atos. Adam, it's great to have you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, it's great to meet you and it's a pleasure to be here today as well. So let's have a quick chat here. Atos set out to shift its entire IT operations. We're talking across data center, multi-cloud to one cloud operating model. Talk about that process, some of the challenges and expected opportunities that drove that massive change. Absolutely. So uh, Atos is an organization of over 110,000 people globally. We support clients in over 70, more than 70 countries, and we've got thousands of customers. Uh, as an organization, we have been around for many, many years. And if you trace our history back, it's over 50, depending on which part of the business we've, we've acquired along the way. So we've been part of the IT evolution for multiple in, in multiple countries and for multiple customers for a very long time. We recognized, we're listening to our customers and very, working very closely with them, that uh, the way that we've been operating our business for many years, the way that we've been serving our customers, the way that we need to deliver our services needs to shift to a new paradigm. That new paradigm needs to be built around an understanding that the, the, the data center that we've been supporting for many years is changing in nature. Uh, the, 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 the continuum around cloud isn't just around supporting core data centers, but of course, the movement to hyperscalers, public cloud, uh, maybe sovereign cloud in the future, and of course, edge clouds as well, mean that we need to do things differently. So we need to be able to service our customers in a consistent way, giving them consistent experience wherever their workloads may sit, being able to deliver for them a consistent set of operations while still delivering on those service levels that they've known us there for years. And we have to do that with the customer in mind, really helping them to enable to, to embrace our services and consume those services from a from a marketplace uh, or a set of APIs that are enabling them to get the services as and when they need them in near real time. And also for them to get uh, ability to, uh, to get real time data about the way that their services are performing so that we can continue to support them and enhance their operations. So listening to its customers to deliver consistent services and experiences is obviously key to Atos. I know that Atos works as a partner with Hitachi Ventura, but you're also a customer of its infrastructure solution. So let's focus on the customer side for a moment. Talk to us about how you've worked with Hitachi Ventura to help with that transition that you just talked about. Maybe address some of the challenges that you still expect to see in the future and some of the results that you've achieved so far. 
It would be a pleasure. So um, we've been working with, with Hatata Ventara for, for many years, and they support us in different types of industries, whatever the industries are, and again, multiple countries around the world. And the, it started off as, as, as a really great partnership. And I think for that trusted partnership, it developed into uh, us being a, as a customer as well to be able to consume and understand where they're investing in their innovation so we don't have to. It's our job as a system integrator and an outsourcer to be able to get the, the best of technologies from whatever of our ecosystem partners we have and being able to glue those together in a way that allows us to serve our customers, as mentioned earlier, in, in the best possible way. So what we started to do with them is work in a, in a, in a much closer way, much earlier in the process, in a CTO to CTO capability. Uh, understand the emerging technologies they're investing in and embed that in as part of our core services that we're transforming. We're moving to a, uh, a model delivery framework where we need to have embedded as the foundations of those capabilities all of the components that allow us to continue to serve our customers, but also with a view to the future. And by that, we mean moving from the cloud to a multi-cloud environment, understanding what true hybrid cloud means, enabling what we'd call elasticity to be able to scale up and scale down on demand, enable things like uh, visibility of on-demand on based pricing, consumption based, while still retaining the SLAs that we've been famous for and can guarantee in those services, that consistency of service, the consistency of deliverable deliveries that um that our customers expect from us and Hitachi uh, have never let us down and we're really pleased that we can continue this this journey with them I've been a partner with them for many years but also as a as a consumer of their services um we we need to be able to have someone who moves with us and one of the things that's really important for us as a, as a customer is our journey to net zero and in particular areas around things like sustainability and we know that's really high up on their agenda as well so there's a perfect alignment from that perspective. So it sounds like it started out with a great partnership as you mentioned it sounds quite collaborative so talk to me a little bit in our final question here Adam about how Atlas has worked with Hitachi Venture to solve issues for your customers maybe Give us some examples of, of, of business outcomes, technical outcomes that your joint customers are realizing. We work together to plan our own focus on the business outcomes and the value we can deliver for customers. And that doesn't matter which particular industry, but we focus on various different industries to allow us to continue to build the momentum there and to grow the capabilities and skills that we've managed to, to, to create uh, over the years, the IP that we are able to, to deliver together and the service uh, capabilities that we want to continue to build upon. One of the things around the partnership is, is to build on things like the optimized power systems that Hitachi Ventara give us, um, where we are supporting, let's say, governments or, or, or organizations in uh, man managing buildings, managing cities, delivering infrastructure for, for railways, or providing se secure data foundations for the businesses of the future. And one of the reasons why we continue to do this is it's easy for us to train our people up in the necessary tools and technologies uh, that, that as they are, are emerging with, with Hitachi Ventara, and we continue to invest in that space and they support us, not just to, to make sure we've got the right comp competencies and capabilities of, available when we need it, but also in our joint go-to-market activities to make sure that we understand the solutions that we need to be able to push out and those industry solutions that we continue to build upon are able to be supported in the best possible way, but also continuously advanced from an innovation perspective going forward. It's definitely a journey, Adam. It sounds like it's a great collaborative, really deeply integrated partnership that Actos and Hitachi Ventura have. Thank you for talking about us, with us about the partnership as well as how it is for Actos as a customer of Hitachi Ventura and ultimately how you're, it, it, you're working together on the transition Actos has been through and helping your customers to become truly data-driven. Adam, it's been a pleasure to have you on the program today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Likewise, this is Lisa Martin on behalf of theCUBE and Hitachi Ventura. We want to thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more great content coming up. At Hitachi Ventara, we're making data centers not only eco-friendly, but eco-first and foremost, reducing carbon emissions and consuming 65% less energy. Hitachi Ventara, for the planet, for the data-driven. Welcome back to our event, Data Driven Starts with Intelligent Infrastructure. I'm your host, Lisa Martin. In this segment, we're gonna be talking about partnering for innovation 
in an uncertain market. As you know, in addition to solving for complexity and security and sustainability, IT leaders are also facing some pretty big economic pressures in a market that continues to evolve. In this segment, you're going to hear from two industry leaders on how they're partnering to help customers solve some of these problems. Please welcome my two guests. Kevin Purcell is here, Head of Global Strategic Partnerships at Hitachi Vantara, and Giorgio Vanzini, VP Strategic Alliances and Partners at DXC Technology. Gentlemen, it's great to have you on the program. Thank you. Thank you. Great to be here, Lisa. Yeah, all right, Giorgio, we're going to start with you. Talk about some of the challenges, the biggest challenges that you're hearing about today from customers that are coming to you wanting to set up a data infrastructure. Yes, well, as part of a systems integrator that works worldwide, you know, we see the same challenges pretty much consistently across all the geogra you know, geographies, meaning the lack of resources and having the right delivery skill set on, on the customer side. Uh, but then also, you know, going into high, kind of the cost-effective solutions that they want to deploy or modernize, modernize as well. And then obviously, you know, the um, outcome-driven kind of um, commitments that they have, the ability to really, you know, drive uh, to the bottom line there, uh, which, you know, goes to the um, TCO and the return of investment. Uh, and basically all of our customers are asked to do more with less. And so they're looking for efficiencies and they're looking for, you know, leverage points uh, and also to reduce the overall technical debt. A lot of people are being asked to do more with less. Kevin, let's bring you into the conversation. Comment on some of the challenges that you're seeing from your standpoint in the market, and then give us a little bit of backstory on how DXC and Hitachi Ventura are working together to help customers combat some of those challenges. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, I think, you know, Lisa, Giorgio's spot on with many of those uh, topics that he brought up. And I think, you know, I like to call it recession-proof solutions. Um, you know, there is a tremendous uh, impact from macroeconomic pressures, you know, all across the globe. You know, in some parts of the world, it's even worse than others. But I think the impact is causing a change in how, you know, many customers are dealing with not only purchasing solutions, but also how they how they address the challenges and how do they compete in their markets. So, you know, I think uh, at least from an Atachi perspective and certainly working with uh, Giorgio and his team at DXC, we're looking at really developing joint solutions that are recession proof, um, ESG initiatives that I'm sure uh, many have heard about in, in the, you know, in the media and across uh, many of the businesses that we're working with. Um, you know, we're looking to help drive more sustainable uh, data centers through uh, infrastructure that we provide that actually use less energy. Um, so there's a lot of focus around uh, green data centers. Uh, also, you know, from a uh, joint perspective and what we're doing in the marketplace, and to be honest with you, it's so unique, is that, you know, Atachi infrastructure has been uh, really known for its uptime. And what was really interesting, a real quick story, when Giorgio and I first met, you know, we, we talked about the fact that, you know, there isn't a lot of uh, interaction with our senior executives. And one of the things that uh, Giorgio said to me was, look, the, probably the reason is, is because your stuff doesn't break, you know, and, and they don't hear about it. So one of the things that we're trying to do is, is really address some of the uptime uh, challenges that maybe some of the banks are having in that marketplace. Certainly in the uh, automobile industry, we're, we're focused on uh, EV vehicles. And as you're probably aware, Itachi is an $80 billion conglomerate of companies that focus on many different, ener you know, different industries, such as uh, energy and rail and other, other parts of uh, the industry. So yeah, there's a lot of uniqueness to our partnership. We're going to unpack that a little bit as well. Giorgio, give us your perspective through your lens. How are DXC and Hitachi Ventura working together specifically? Um, Kevin mentioned the recession proof solutions, but in a, in a recession like environment, what's that partnership like? Yes, no, you always try to differentiate yourself. So when you think about DXC and uh, Hitachi Ventura, so we're trying to go after cost effective solutions, but not just in a generic term but for a specific industry. So Kevin mentioned like, you know, banking, capital markets. So what can we do that differentiates our offerings and our solution in that specific market? Uh, and then also being, you know, cautious about the requirements that the customers have, uh, specifically around the service offerings and being flexible around this. You see a lot of the shift in industry to as a service 
right? You know, pay for what you use and the usage based kind of, uh, you know, um, um, invoicing based on uh, their infrastructure and their, their uh, requirements. Uh, and basically helping the customers move into that kind of direction, uh, helping them, you know, finding out the competitive ad advantage and then addressing the, the macroeconomic challenges, you know, as you mentioned before, is like doing more with less and customizing those solutions to their specific industry, be that automotive, be that banking and capital market or be that manufacturing to specifically go after those. I want to get both of your perspectives. You've talked about the, a uniqueness differentiation from a solution perspective. Kevin, question for you, Giorgio, same for you, is what's unique about the partnership and how you're working together with customers to combat those challenges? Yeah, as, as Kevin mentioned, is like when we started the, um, the road together, you know, with, uh, with Itachi and DXE, it basically, you know, it all boils down to trust and uh, competency that we bring together. And so we have, we've had a multi-year engagement um, built on trust and transparency of focusing on, on our joint clients. And the, the success basically proves that kind of approach where the clients come back and say, we believe in both of your solution and there's nothing more compelling than showing up together at a customer uh, so that the customer doesn't have to worry about, oh, so you guys not just have lip service, you actually show up together to the customer and provide the solution as well. Um, the other thing is, you know, we, we have regular uh, in, engagements on the product roadmaps. So we know exactly where Hitachi Intara is going and how that aligns to our offerings. So when we do joint development, it actually coincides and comes across nicely together because it's a joint kind of development and approach. And so the technology stacks makes a lot of sense. And if you combine that with the flexibility on the cost infrastructure for the for the customers as a service, then it really is a win-win, you know, from a technology and from a business perspective. That trust is key. Kevin, in, in our last minute or so here, can you comment on from Hitachi Vantara's perspective through that lens, what's unique about the partnership and what you guys are doing together, showing up together, obviously, as Giorgio talked about. Yeah, no, absolutely, Lisa. So, you know, I think if you look at where we are today and where we came from, um, the uniqueness and the differentiation we bring to the marketplace is, is really specific. Um, many of the uh, as a service offerings that Georgia was talking about actually requires no commitment upfront. And uh, you know that's a new, really new way of doing business together. Um, what we're looking to do is, is provide flexibility to our joint customers. So as they need more infrastructure, we provide it when they need less, we provide less. And I think it's uh, it's really working well. Uh, we're, we're very much looking forward to the future. And uh, I think we'll see some really great things uh, in the next uh, year or so. Very collaborative, very responsive to the customer's environment. Giorgio, last question is for you. Give us a, a look, a peek on the horizon for the rest of the year, priorities for the business, maybe even into 2024. Absolutely, yeah. P perfect timing because we start our fiscal year at DXC, you know, next uh, next month. So we clearly did a lot of planning around fiscal year 24. The focus is really going to be on solutions and offerings for our customers and doing the right things, especially around uh, mainframe modernization, but also in the verticals. And so we we have kind of the approach of like, you know, we believe in like constraints will set you free. So we'll do fewer things, but we'll focus really on those things and do them really well for our customers. So those are going to be our focus areas. Excellent, guys. Thank you so much for sharing what Hitachi Ventara and DXC Technologies are doing together for customers. It sounds like a great collaborative relationship. We appreciate your insights. Thank you. Thank you. We want to thank you for watching Data Driven Starts with Intelligent Infrastructure. I'm Lisa Martin. Thanks for watching. Data centers account for about 4% of the total greenhouse gas emissions worldwide, and it's about to rise. Hitachi Ventara is committed to changing that. We look at every aspect of our storage business. Hitachi has reduced the annual carbon footprint of VSP by up to 86% since 2014. We are in this for everyone. We're for the data-driven. For those who understand clarity is currency. 
believe progress requires precision and no neutral is not an option. We're for the data-driven, the ones who can't tolerate failure, who won't put up with downtime or allow access to just anyone. We're for the data-driven, who act on insight instead of instinct, bank on privacy instead of probabilities, and rely on resilience instead of reaction. We see ourselves in the obsessive, the incessant progressive, and the meticulously engineered. We enable the incredible, identify with the analytical, and are synonymous with the mission critical. We know what it means to be data-driven because data is in our DNA. We were born industrial and we breathe digital. We speak predictive analytics so you can keep supply chains moving. We bleed in-store and online insights so you can accurately predict customer preferences. We sweat security and digital privacy so you can turn complex regulations into competitive advantage. We break down barriers and eliminate silos so you can go from data rich to data driven. Because it's clear, the future belongs to the data driven. Hey everyone, welcome back to our event, Data Driven Starts with Intelligent Infrastructure. This segment is called Unleashing the Potential of a Data Driven Enterprise. I'm your host, Lisa Martin, and I'm very pleased to welcome Ashish Nadkarni to the program, Group VP and General Manager, Worldwide Infrastructure Research at IDC. Ashish, welcome, great to have you. Thank you for having me. So I hear that you recently had uh, a op great opportunity to attend an industry event where you got to talk with a lot of company execs about the data infrastructure and the data management market. So you're, you and I are gonna have a conversation with that in mind. Love to hear from you what you learned, what you concluded, and most importantly, some of your key takeaways for IT leaders. So Ashish, as more enterprises across every industry are really striving hard to become data-driven, I wanna get your thoughts on some of the challenges they're still facing when setting up a data infrastructure. That's a great question. I think the first thing I would say there is that as companies become data-driven, they need to ensure that the storage infrastructure which houses the key data elements that their company relies on, um, that storage infrastructure is implemented very efficiently. Um, it requires that there be a tight connection between what we call as a data plane and the data persistence layer. Um, that connection actually allows uh, these companies, their workloads, the applications to make the most out of the data, being able to intelligently weave through the different data sets um, and at the same time, also be able to look forward in terms of how that analytics is done and how the intelligence is gathered from, um, from, from those data sets. Um, now, what happens is if the storage is not implemented uh, efficiently, then you're going to start to have challenges. You're not going to be able to bring out the potential in all of the data uh, that, that you're gathering and collecting and, and keeping in your infrastructure. So basically storage solutions have to be implemented if efficiently and vendors have to be able to deliver that connection between the data plane and the storage infrastructure uh, natively uh, in, in, in a way that, that makes it seamless for these companies to implement uh, that, that storage infrastructure. So as, as those organizations, as we talked about in any industry, are really striving to not only become data-driven, but to leverage the intelligence that you talk about, and you look out on that data horizon, what are some of the things that IT leaders really need to be ensuring to ensure that their infrastructure is future-ready? And the second part is, how do you define future-ready? Yeah, so that's another great question. I think the future-ready part of it comes from making sure that uh, these organizations can uh, bring in newer workloads as they are modernizing their existing workloads. Now we we hear about cloud all the time, but what really cloud is is a is is the organization embracing an agile, a pay as you go, um, you know, cookie cutter infrastructure that can then be uh, designed to work for the organization as it sort of switches from from these traditional workloads to modern cloud native workloads. 
Um, it requires that the not just the infrastructure be modern and agile, but also the consumption of it. You know, it cannot just be um, the way that people consumed infrastructure a few years back, which was a very capital intensive process. It requires companies to be uh, more um, OPEX friendly uh, or embrace the infrastructure consumption in an OPEX friendly fashion. Uh, it requires them to embrace what we call as a hybrid cloud uh, operating environment. And, and ultimately, what it, what it is, is, you know, you cannot just say one thing or the other. So in the past, it was all about on-premises, traditional infrastructure. In the future, it's all about, you know, a hybrid model, which takes what is public cloud and connects it with on-premises uh, workloads or on-premises infrastructure in a way that delivers an agile infrastructure across um, your entire uh, infrastructure estate, if you will, uh, and and at the same time you are able to deliver what your business needs in an agile and um, you know flexible fashion. You mentioned being modern and agile, agility key there. With those in mind, when you're talking to customers and you're in conversations, what do you advise them to be looking for when they're evaluating technology providers that they need to help them solve those challenges so that they can truly become data driven with an infrastructure to your point that's future ready. So that's uh, so. I think the first I would start by saying that you know sometimes putting all your eggs in one basket can be a dangerous proposition. People need to think about their environment as a, a flexible operating entity, as something that can be decoupled from the rigidity that we've had in traditional environments. So whether it is um, you know hybrid environments which make a use of public cloud and um, on-premises infrastructure. So with that in mind, I think, uh, and, and the second thing I would say is that workloads are changing. So it's not just your traditional business workloads, but also modern cloud native workloads. So with all of that in mind, I think you need to look for storage solutions um, that offer number one, the hybrid operating model uh, natively, um, it, meaning that they should be able to seamlessly uh, make use of all of the real estate footprint that you have uh, at your disposal, and that includes uh, public cloud services. The second I would say is that it needs to be a combination of performance optimized um, solutions and capacity optimized solutions that operate together uh, in a seamless fashion, which means that when your workloads require lots of performance, you can deliver that when your workloads are uh, looking for that capacity footprint so that you can uh, tear off some of the uh, colder data sets or data sets that are no longer active, um, then you can do that in a seamless fashion. The third, as I mentioned earlier, is that connection between the data plane and the infrastructure or the data plane and the persistence layer. What that allows you to do is not just query the data, but also get that intelligence from the data in a sort of a native fashion, which then minimizes some of the overhead that your IT decision makers have to do uh, to gain that level of visibility into their data real estate. Um, I would also say that increasingly we are seeing this trend where different business units are combining their uh, efficiencies, if you will, to, to get the most out of their real estate, uh, infrastructure real estate. And what I mean by there, that is the operational technology and the internet of things technologies and the IT technologies are being combined to deliver a seamless experience powered by a common infrastructure footprint. So the solution has to support that convergence. So the ITOT convergence, as we call it, needs to be part of the storage solution. And then the last thing I would make as a comment here is uh, increasingly customers are uh, concerned about the carbon emissions footprint, the sustainability footprint of their uh, overall IT uh, and you know data centers, as we know, are huge contributors to the overall um, you know uh, the green emissions, if you, uh, the carbon emissions, if you will. So people are looking for ways to you know um, make their real estate uh, data center real estate efficient, and so the storage solutions that they are looking for must support those. Uh, in a measurable fashion, meaning that they should be able to give you the not just the return on investment, but also how efficient are they? And so going from what you had before to uh, what what you would be implementing in the future. With those recommendations in mind, I'm glad that you, you brought up the ESG factor. In our last minute, Ashish, talk to me about some of the key takeaways from the recent assessment that you've done of Hitachi Vantara. Where do you see tech providers investing like Hitachi? Why are customers engaging? Give me that that, you know, 60 second 
overview? Sure. So let me start by first saying that I am a long time um, fan of Hitachi in the, in the sense that I've been using Hitachi products for a long time in my previous life before I joined IDC. And so I have seen this journey for over 10 years now, um, almost, you know, 15 or 16 years. Um, and I've, I've appreciated the fact that Hitachi has, Hitachi Bantara has, um, you know, made some significant strides in modernizing their, their storage portfolio, going from what it used to be as a, you know, sort of a very, um, sort of a data center based portfolio to be a modern uh, software defined portfolio that can offer not just the the foundational element for the storage infrastructure, but also some of the key data analytics, um, software defined capabilities that are uh, mandatory almost in a modern um, IT infrastructure. Um, what I also appreciate is the fact that they have, um, you know, solutions now that can deliver the data intelligence and the um, efficient IT footprint um, that is necessary for uh, most modern applications to scale. Um, they have done significant strides in, in providing solutions that offer that ITOT conversions on a common infrastructure platform. And then lastly, I will say they have a, a you know, a flexible consumption as pay as you go model that that is quite um, modern, it quite comprehensive, and um, they are also at the forefront of um, of articulating uh, the the efficiency of their storage for um, for the modern, highly sustainable uh, green data center. Green Data Center's Modern Agile. Ashish, thank you so much for coming on the program, talking about how organizations across every enterprise can set up a data infrastructure that allows them to truly leverage data to be data-driven. We appreciate your time. We appreciate your insights. Thank you. And we appreciate you for watching. As we've talked to you about in this program, we know more enterprises are striving really hard to become data-driven so that they can deliver greater value to the customers. That's what they want. But in addition to solving for complexity and security and sustainability, IT leaders are also facing economic pressures in a market that we know continues to evolve. Therefore, the right infrastructure and the right provider will be key to achieving business goals today and in the future. We invite you to learn more about how Hitachi Ventara can help make your infrastructure future ready. And you can do that by clicking on the link below. Don't forget also, all these videos are available on demand to watch and rewatch, and of course, share at thecube.net. Also, check out siliconangle.com for the news and analysis. We're gonna, there, we're gonna summarize all the highlights of this program. This is Lisa Martin, and on behalf of theCUBE and Hitachi Ventara, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.